Okay, let's be real. Meta Horizon World is kind of promising, but it can also be quite weird if you're used to game engines like Unity or Unreal. The workflows are different, things break for no reason, and sometimes you feel like you're fighting the tool more than building with it. I'm Jad at Immersive Insiders and after spending way too long in this editor, I have a few tips and tricks that I'd like to share with you that made my life easier and hopefully will make yours too. So whether you're just getting started with Meta Horizon World's editor or are already knee deep into creating your own world, these are 10 tips and tricks that I wish I knew earlier and that will hopefully help you out. Without further ado, let's hop right into it. Tip number one, always start in the desktop editor unless you love paint. But wait, this might not be the case for long. As you might know, the Meta Horizon Worlds editor can both be accessed from VR and also from the desktop as of now. And if you're planning to do any scripting at all, I highly recommend using the desktop version of the editor because you'll be able to write your own scripts rather than using the node-based coding that is in the VR version. And something I noticed specifically about that is if you have a script that has been created in the VR version of the editor and you try to access it in the desktop version, you'll not be able to edit it. It will not be accessible at all. So any scripts that you create in one version of the other are not compatible to be edited. So you'll not be able to access them, but they will be working. So. If you, if you have them on an object, it will still work. It will still affect the object, any script that is attached to it. But you will not be able to edit the scripts created in VR and the scripts created in uh, desktop in the opposite version, basically. This is something that hopefully Meta will improve in the next updates and will allow us to be able to edit and access these scripts from either version, no matter what version they were created in and what uh, coding system they were used in. Hopefully they will also introduce the node-based system of coding into the editor version on the desktop. For now, desktop is the way to go if you want to add custom functionality. Tip number two, use the standalone installer instead of the Quest app. So you might have noticed if you have the Meta Quest Link app that you can download and run the Meta Horizon Worlds editor directly from that application. This one's weirdly undocumented, but if you actually download the Meta Horizon Worlds editor from the Meta website instead of from the Quest Link application, you could save yourself some time on loading because you don't need to open the Quest Link app and then the editor itself. You just directly open the editor. And it also doesn't auto update, so you don't need to worry about it happening while you're editing. And to help you with that, I'll drop the link in the description so you can find it easily. Tip number three, close and restart the editor often. If you're working with custom scripts in VS Code or in Visual Studio, for example, sometimes you'll notice that your changes aren't being updated and they're getting removed. Especially if you're working in a team and you have multiple people uh, editing in the scene. Hopefully that doesn't happen to you, but if it does, keep in mind that you can just close the application, restart the editor, tell all your teammates to exist and do this again when it happens. Hopefully they find a fix for this, but for the time being, a quick restart is the way to go. Tip number four, parenting objects in the hierarchy has some quirky rules. So you'd think that parenting objects and childing objects in the hierarchy would act similarly to how it does in Unity or Unreal and so on. But actually in Meta Horizon worlds, something weird happens where sometimes some of the properties of the parent gets applied to all of the children. Like for example, if you have a an invisible trigger collider as the parent and you try to add objects inside of it as children that shouldn't be invisible and you make them uh, visible, you make sure that the visible toggle is on, they will still be invisible just because they are childed to the invisible parent. And this might not be the functionality that you want. So just keep in mind that things like this might happen. Another example could be that the parent object has collisions turned off but the children have t collisions turned on. Even though they have it turned on, they will not be collidable just because the parent has collisions turned off. So you can see how this can be quite annoying in some scenarios, just keep it in mind and work around it, as I said before. Tip number five, creating empty objects and child objects. If you try to add a new empty object into the scene, you'll quickly notice you cannot right click and add the empty object straight away. So what you would need to do is click on build, click on empty object and add it into the scene like so. And then you would need to reset, for example, the position to 000. Now, if you want to add a child object into it, 
Let's say, for example, we want to add a cube into here. We cannot right click and add the cube straight into the parent object. And we cannot create a child object that is empty either from here. All we can do is create a parent object to this empty game object. So if we would like to have the cube in there, what we would need to do is go to shapes, add the cube, for example, this beveled cube into the scene. We cannot drag it into the empty object directly either. And then we would need to uh, child it like so in the hierarchy by dragging it. And then we can reset it to zero if we want. So as you can see, this can be quite tedious, but there's a workaround to getting to this same result a bit faster. That workaround I'll show you in a second. And what it is, is basically this. We will go into build, we will create the child object first, if that's the only one we need. We create the child object, so let's say for example the sphere, we put it into the scene, and then we right click on the sphere, and we create parent object. And this is going to create an empty object that is the parent of this sphere with the same position and so on. So this is a bit of a quicker way of achieving the same result. And let's say we want to add another child object into here. If it's the same object, what we can do is duplicate this. If not, we'll need to do it in the same way that we did before, just by adding it and then dragging it in. Hopefully they fix this in the future and they allow us to create an empty child object into any object and they make it easier for us to create empty objects by just right clicking the hierarchy. Tip number six, sharing asset folders. So are you looking to work in a team and are trying to figure out a way to have a shared assets folder for everyone to be able to access all kinds of assets? Well, this is the way. First, what you would need to do in order to start collaborating with someone is clicking on this arrow right here. As you can see right now, there are zero collaborators on this project. All you need to do is invite people and add them by username. Now, what to do to add them to a uh, shared uh, folder? As you can see here, there are my, if you click on my assets, you'll see my folders and then you'll see shared with me. So in shared with me, normally there is no uh, shared assets folder like this. This is a folder that was shared with uh, me. So in this case, it would not be here. You'd have only this shared with me folder. If you try to create a folder right inside of it and click on add and add folder, it will not get added in there. Any asset that you try to import into this folder directly will not work. It will get added into your folders right here. So what do you do? Actually, you cannot do anything from here directly. You need to access it from the website and I'll give you the link. I'll make sure to add the link in the description, but basically this is what it looks like. Let me show you. So you take this, you go into this website right here. Uh, you sign into, you log into your Meta Horizon uh, account. And then what you need to do is create a new folder. In this case, I created a new folder and then I named it test. Uh, and here you see, this is the test folder that I created. And so what you do after you create this is share it and you share it again with usernames. Once you have it shared here, people with those usernames will have access to that folder and they will see it right here. They will see it uh, under shared with me. In this case, one person created this shared assets folder and shared it with me. So I now have access to it in my shared with me, uh, under my shared with me folder. Tip number seven, transparent plane hack. So you'll realize quite quickly that if you're trying to create anything transparent in Meta Horizon worlds, you're going to have a tough time because there is currently no apparent way of doing it. If you see, for example, this plane right here that I've added, it's colored blue, but there's no setting for transparency and it seems like it's not supported yet. But we actually found a workaround that you could use so that you can fake transparency or achieve transparency, but not in the uh, normal way that you would think. And the way to do that is through the text gizmo. So let's see what we can do with it. We go into build, we go into gizmos, and we add the uh, text gizmo right here. Let's bring it close next to this plane, like so. And now we will type the following. 
we'll open this and type alpha equals and we will type hash and then here we'll, we'll choose the transparency in this case I'll choose 50% transparency and I'll close the brackets and type I so basically what we're doing here is we are typing the letter I and you will see right here it's the letter I and it is transparent it's colored white right now but we'll, what we can do is color it like so and you can see the color changing color it like so and now what we can do is we can scale it on the x-axis so let's scale it by five and you'll see we have kind of a transparent square here we can scale it however much we want for example we'll put 10 here and we'll put it to three on the z-axis I guess no uh, sorry one and three on the y-axis there we go now we have a transparent blue plane you can see it's a bit weird on the sides but it's better than nothing I mean you have a transparent plane that you can color and you can use for example for windows for water or whatever creative way you find to use it tip number eight adding your own sky dome so are you trying to add your own sky dome and you can't figure out how to do it for example you click on environment and then you go to sky dome type cube map but there seems to be no place for you to actually add the cube map only choose between textures that are already existing so what do you do there's actually a way to import your own sky domes and to do that click on add new sky dome and here it gives you a couple options that you can add for your sky dome for example if you want a radiance map a reflection map and a fog map but these are optional uh, what you need is this aspect ratio or this resolution of a PNG which is basically the cube map but uh, all in a horizontal uh, format so how do you actually make this you need first the skybox of course you need how uh, you need the sky dome uh, texture but you need to cut it up and place it into the specific format that they're asking here how do you do this there's actually documentation for it and I'll give you the documentation below, but I will also show you real quick how it works. So this is methods documentation on how to actually achieve it. And they show you here how you need to slice it up and how you need to add it. Uh, let's go down a bit. So they explain it a bit. You'll need to do it outside of the actual editor. There's no way that the editor can automatically slice it up for you or give it, you give it the texture and slice it up. It doesn't do that. So you need to do it outside of the editor and then bring it in in this format that you see right here. Tip number nine, world sim, not simming. So we've added an animation on your object or a script that makes it rotate and you press on world sim, but nothing happens. Why is that? That is because funnily enough, the world sim doesn't work on the object that you have selected. So you need to select something else for it, for you to see it in action. So as soon as I click off of this snowflake, for example, I will now see it start rotating. And if I click on it again, it will stop rotating. So just keep that in mind if you're pressing on world sim and nothing happens and you're wondering why. Also, if you're wondering what this world is, this is actually a world that we created for the Meta Horizon Creator Competition. And so if you want to check it out, I'll leave a link to it in the description. Tip number 10, master the shortcuts. If you're coming from Unity or Unreal, you might be familiar with these kind of shortcuts, but hopefully there's at least one that you didn't know about. So the first thing you might want to try out is holding the right mouse button and using WASD to move around. You can press shift to move faster and you can also use your scroll wheel to increase the camera speed. This is something very useful when you're trying to move around the scene and getting to certain objects. Now to find objects quickly, you can click on them and then click on F to focus on them. Another thing that you can do is duplicate objects, for example, control D to add another instance on the object and you can then move it around. There we go. Now, if you want to select multiple objects, what you can do is click and then shift click to the uh, other uh, object where you want to select a bunch of ones in a sequence, for example, like so. So shift and left click. And if you want to add to it or if you want to select multiple objects, you, you press on control and you left click on the objects you want to add and you can even click on ones to remove them. Now, if you're looking to handle some of the objects easier, what you can do is once you select them, 
you can toggle between the different uh, options right here by clicking Q, W, E and R. So as you can see, I can switch between select, move, rotate and scale. And there you have it. 10 tips and tricks for Meta Horizon Worlds desktop editor. As you see, it still has a way to go. But if you learn these quirks early, you can actually build some really cool stuff without pulling your hair out. If you found this useful, please hit a like. And if you want some more hands-on VR tutorials, including some in Meta Horizon Worlds, don't forget to subscribe and let us know in the comments down below. Also, what's the weirdest bugs that you faced and how did you overcome them? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.